Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going back to working on the Moto Standard 1010. It has been a while since we last worked on this and believe it or not, this is part 16. So we have done a lot of work on this tractor. Now today we'll be hoping to change the bushes in the front axle uh, and the steering so that we can get the front wheels back on and get this back on uh, all fours. However, as you can see, the bench is a complete mess. So while you're watching the intro, we'll get this cleaned up. We've had a good clear up of the bench now and anything that's not related to this uh, project has gone and we've removed a lot of dust from the tractor too uh, so we are now ready to get going now let's talk about a couple of things we did off camera before this video which is the painting of the stub axle and the wheel now the stub axle went pretty well and we're happy that we picked the right color match uh, for the moto standard paint and then there was the wheel, which was a lot more difficult. This has been repainted uh, three or four times because we weren't happy with the finish the previous times. Um, so that took ages to get to the point where we were happy with the paint. And then uh, we installed the tire and the tube without any tools or anything like that to make sure that we didn't damage the paint. And we managed to do that successfully. Um, and we also installed uh, the bushes in the centre too, uh, while trying to cause minimal damage to the paint, which was pretty successful. So that is all done. Apologies for no footage of these, but they were pretty painful, especially the wheel, uh, having to repaint it multiple times. First job of the day then, and we are going to take out the old bushings in the front axle so that we can replace them. Now, the one on the bottom here is already taken out, and there's two on each side, one on top, one on the bottom. So on this side, we only need to take out uh, the top one. Bottom one we took out to get the measurements so that we could actually buy the new bushes, uh, which we did quite a while ago now. We have that bush out now, uh, but as you saw, it was a bit stubborn coming out. Uh, so we'll see how the ones on the other side go. And we'll start with the bottom one this time. And we'll see if this is any easier. This one has started to move. There we go, that's second bush out now just for the top one off camera we've just taken uh, the top bush out which is good because it was quite stuck now once we got it out we cleaned out all inside here so that is now ready for the new bushes which uh, we worked out how we're going to install them normally we would try and uh, set this up on the press but we don't really want to take the front axle off just to do that so what we did is we looked through uh, our storage and this is one of our uh, bush pressing tools that we've made in the past. Now, originally it didn't have this hole in it because it would have been for the press and you didn't need it. But since we're not going to be using the press, uh, we put the hole through it. So that M12 bolt goes on here like that. And if we put the bush on there, 
that fits like that. Um, if I put a washer on here, nut on the end, then that means that effectively, as we do up the bolt, it pulls the, as we do it up, it will pull the bush down into position. So I've got two 19 mil spanners here. And we will start going with this. Almost there. And there it's gone uh, tight, so I think that is in enough. Now I'll just take this off. And we will get to see uh, the end result. There we go, the bush is successfully in there. And now we can repeat the same process uh, on the bottom one on this side and then for the two bushes on the other side. On the second one now, and we're just using a ratchet to try and speed up the process a little bit. the bushes on this side now too uh, and we've got a shim on there which really acts as a bit of a uh, thrust washer on there and as you can see we've very heavily oiled this and we've oiled in here because we thought with how tight of a fit this is um, we didn't want to grease it because we think all grease will just get pushed out anyway so there's not really much point we did have to do a tiny bit of filing to make this fit but as I said, it is a tight one. Let's get all the way up like that. And then I'll put this washer over. Then we can put the snap ring on top. That wasn't very well put on. And just make sure that goes in all the way around, which it has, and that is now fitted. After installing the stub axle on this side, uh, we noticed a bit of up and down movement, and in the manual it says to shim the gaps accordingly, so that's what we did. We found uh, one of the shims that was left over that was the right size, and now that's got no movement at all, and still turns nicely without any up and down movement, so that's good. We're assuming these other shims that are on this side are for dealing with movement on the wheel. Now, if we go around to the other side, uh, we've short on shims over here. So you can see there is still a bit of up and down movement, uh, but we've measured and we think that using the feeler gauge, uh, a 
millimeter shim is what we need as you can see that stops all up and down movement so we will start a list of shims that we need to order and first one will be a half millimeter shim for this side with those bushes done we're now going to move on to the wheels and as we said earlier the one that we repainted and fixed in a previous video already has the bushes in so it's just the one for the left hand side that we need to do now because it's not attached to a tractor we can put it in the press which will make it a lot easier and probably a lot quicker and we're going to use the same uh, tooling as we did before uh, put bush on there and it is the same size bush as what go in uh, as the ones which go in the axle so now I'll just put that on there and move this you will have noticed that because the tire sticks up past the rim it will make contact with the tire before it does the rim uh, which is why we've got wooden blocks underneath here and we're expecting the tire just to compress and then it go on to the rim for the pressure and there shouldn't be a lot of pressure you can see i'm not even using the lever uh, right now that's uh, moving now I'm going to move to the lever, but at this point it's already on the rim so it won't be causing any more damage uh, to the tyre, so that should be fine. Right, there we go, and we will release this. Again. That up to there. Take this out, and I would say that's pretty much perfectly flush. We've turned the wheel around now, and I'm now uh, doing the other side. Literally just the reverse operation of before. And hopefully get this one uh, flush like the previous one. Should be there. And do that. Take that out. And I'm pretty happy with that how that one's turned out too. Wheel fitting time now. Uh, we've oiled up uh, the stub axle there and we've put one of the shims on already. So we'll see how this fits. That's got on all right. And then there's another shim and a washer that came with this. So we'll put them on. And if I put the snap ring on too, we can see just how much movement there's going to be on here. Because I can already tell there's going to be a bit of it. Yeah, it's quite a bit of side to side movement there. So I think we need to add a few more shims uh, to our shopping list. Now onto this side, and we're missing even more shims on this side, so that's more added to our shopping list. And we'll see how this fits. It's quite tight, but it's still going on. There we go, that is fully on. And get you a bit more light here. Put the washer on and brand new snap ring or circlip whatever you want to call it that is on there and it may not be uh, permanent due to uh, more um, shims being needed but it's the first time in a while that this side has actually had a functional wheel on it uh, which is good now that we've got that done, uh, the next thing we're going to move on to is this tie rod, which goes between the two stub axles. And the pins on these are quite worn. If I take this off, uh, you'll get a better look at it. You can see the, the chunk taken out of that. So what we've got is we've got some new ones here. We've got two of these, which are exactly the same as these ones. And what we're planning to do is wind this off 
and then leaving the nut in the same position will then wind the new ones on so hopefully the tracking should be uh, the same if not very close to each other and we'll do that one at a time so that we know uh, at what point this should be pointing upwards. We're over by the bench now with the vise and I've got a 19mm spanner to go on this nut to stop it moving and now we will We've got this adjustable for uh, the tie rod MT, which was on the right setting a minute ago. There we go. And just loosen this off. Now that's loose, I shouldn't have to hold the nut anymore. and the old one is off, and I can just start winding the new one on. Thread is pretty clean on this, so that's good. Both ends on now, and we've cleaned up the rod a bit more, so that looks nice. And time to put these on here. You may recall we put these bronze bushes on this part too. Uh, to make sure that, that wears less in future. Put that through there and put the clip on. Now I'll need to go to the other side to make this a bit easier. And semi difficult to line that up, but I think I've got it now. There we go. And now if I move this side, both wheels move in tandem. We've now had a better look at the steering system and there's pretty much nowhere at all, which is good from all of the bushings and new parts that we put on this. Uh, something we have noticed is that uh, the bracket that holds on the rod end on the other side uh, might be slightly bent. And the only way we've noticed that is because we've replaced all of the bushes and everything like that. Um, but we'll fix that at the same time that we make sure the tracking is perfect because we did just quickly measure the tracking and we saw that it is slightly off but we're going to do that at the same time uh, when we fit the rod that goes from here back to the steering quadrant and then when we put the wheel steering wheel back on because then we can test out the whole thing uh, and make sure that's all good uh, when we've got the steering wheel back on but that is it for today and now the tractor can go on all fours and starts to look a bit more like a proper tractor. But that is it for this video, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!